What's again. diaverticulitis, giving it's, the name itis at the end of it? So you know? itis means inflammation. Yes. So anything with itis in it means inflammation. So there, there's things called diverticular, yep. diverticular, and they are like little outpouchings in your colon. Mm-hmm. So, um, and they can just, they can happen for different reasons, which we will go into. Oof. So that's what the little pouches are called. Yeah. So then there's something called diverticulosis. Osis, yeah. So that just basically means the presence yep. of these diverticular in mm. the colon. So that just means that they're there. Mm. Um, and then diverticulitis is when they become inflamed. So mm. those po- those pouches actually get inflamed. That's called diverticulitis. Mm-hmm. And then diverticular disease mm-hmm. um, is when it becomes symptomatic. So, wow. Yeah. So okay. there it goes. So that's the progression. Holy mackerel. Yeah. Um, and I mean prevalent in a lot of people. So so tell us about the prevalence. Yeah, so the prevalence. So it's, it's actually can be a little bit difficult to, to actually – um, see stats on actually how many people have it because a lot of people that have it remain asymptomatic. Yeah. It's in, been increasing a lot more over the years. Yeah. Um, and it does increase with age. Great. So got some data. I've tried to it. find a bit of data. So international data shows that colonic diverticular are present in more than 60% of people over 80 years of, old, 80 years of age and um, more than 50% in people over 60. So that's, that's over half much. the population yeah, of people half. who are 60 if you and see over, a sixty-year-old that, um, that have the col- uh, colonic diverticular. So if you see a sixty-year-old, the chances are they've probably You've got some got sort of outpocketing. Some Data showed that between two thousand and five and two thousand and fifteen, there's nearly a one hundred percent increase in cases admitted to hospital in men aged thirty to fifty-four. Jeez, with diverticulitis. At my age, just, just, yeah. But even I'm 30. from thirty, yeah, 30, yeah, sorry, <laughs> just you just make it in there, Steve. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and this so it's, it's very similar trends overseas as well. So very it's getting worse. Yeah, a lot worse in men. Yeah. So um and then there is more stats. So it is more prevalent in men. Yep. But then from the ages of sixty onwards, it's then flips and it's more prevalent in women. Ah. Yeah. So we, we don't know entirely the mechanism for yeah, that, but I've got some ideas. Yeah, we've got some ideas, but yeah. we, we can speculate, certainly speculate. That'd be certainly yeah. a way to go. But but what an incredible stat. So really very common and getting common if that's Much such a word. Much more common, yeah. I so, mean, I mean, we're, we're, we're in a bit of trouble here. I mean, we are. you know. Yeah. And, so, and there's two main forms of diverticulitis. There is. There? there is two main forms of diverticulitis. So there's mm-hmm. what, something called SUD, <laughs> which is simple, uncomplicated diverticulitis. So it's not the foam in the, in the sink it's not the foam no, no, okay. in the sink. No, no. So there's no complications. No. And then there is complicated diverticulitis, which is associated. It also has a presence of some you know, abscess or fistula, mm. um, perforation, obstruction, hemorrhage. So, so <sighs> it becomes that's why it's called complicated diverticulitis because mm. there's a lot more complications involved. Um, there's acute diverticulitis yep. as well. So that can be complicated or uncomplicated. Yep. And then there's something called SCAD, which is... <laughs> Segmental colitis associated with diverticulosis. Oh, my God. And that's when there's um, segmental circum, uh, circumferential <laughs> colonic wall thickening. So this thickening of the tissues in the colon in, in like a spherical sort of rings. Yes. Um, that's actually really rare. Oh, so you don't good. see that. You would, wouldn't see that very often at all. But but the other two um, a, a lot more common. So, um, so yeah, so really interesting. So... What could yeah. what be? Causes, what, what, what are some of the risk factors? What, 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 risk what factors? can you do to get this or not get it? Yeah, so some of the risk factors would be um, a genetic predisposition. Great. Like so I'm screwed regardless, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Or I'm protected. I mean, I'm just trying to think. I don't think anyone in my family has diverticulitis or mm. diverticulosis or SCUD or SUD or any of those. Yeah. So that's good news. That is good news. My mum's had a colonoscopy a couple of years ago. Mm. She said, I'm never having that again. So <laughs> no, they didn't find anything, but it's yeah. just like wow, so yeah. really bad. Yeah. So All yeah, right. so, so genetics can be genetics can be one that's Great. quite um, uh, a driver. Yep. Uh, chronic low grade inflammation. Ah, well, what so, causes low grade inflammation in the colon? Aside from the, the microbial inflammation, which oh, yeah. we will talk a little bit more about, yep. um, smoking. So that's inflammatory, obviously. Um, obesity, physical inactivity. <laughs> High meat consumption, but mm. I'm going to talk maybe a little bit more about that as yeah. well. Um, so they ca- they're all possible risk factors that pe- that they're, sh- they're showing could be um, it's sort of risk factors for most diseases. Isn't it? Well, Inactivity, for most. I mean, smoking. anything that causes inflammation yeah. can can lead to disease. So, mm. um, you know, most diseases start with inflammation. So, mm. 
you know, and if you have a propensity towards diverticulitis, then perhaps that's why if yeah. you've got inflammatory issues, that's where you, you could end up. Um, and then so then colonic dysbiosis, which is that inflammation, uh, imbalances between your beneficial bacteria and more mm. so inflammatory bacteria mm. or microbes in that colon. So low levels of short-chain um, fatty acid-producing bacteria, which we have talked about in the past. Yeah. So short-chain fatty af- acids, particularly butyrate, Yes. Really important for the health of a colon. So really protective. So um, low levels of bacteria that produce those short chain. I'm going to highlight one in particular um, yeah. later because it's yeah. a really good one. It's a really good and one. And we're going to get, we'll probably get that in the treatments because that's sort of yeah. a, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So you've got to keep listening or you won't find treatments, the answer. Yeah. Treatments and management yep. um, at the end. So hang in there. If so high or low fiber diet. Yeah, high, high low fiber diet. So, when mm-hmm. we'll talk about fiber um, and how that could be possibly a, a driver as well. Yep. Um, NSAID use. NSAID stands for non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. Yeah. So, so, things like aspirins or even Indesid, Celebrex, Mobic, yeah. um, Meloxicam. Oh, Meloxicam is Mobic, sorry. Mm. Um, but any of those NSAIDs, which mm-hmm. are, are non steroidal anti inflammatory, so arthritis medication, naproxen, yep. Feldine, Oritis, those drugs. All that. So there's, I mean, I think you've got some stats on it. Um, oh, I've got some cool stats. That's Katzen, right. But there's a system, uh, systematic review um, and, meta- and meta-analysis found increased odds of perforation and abscess formation with opioid and NSAID use. Our opioid. Yeah, What's so opioid? opioids as well. So op- opioids and NSAIDs. Wow. So that can, or NSAIDs, so that could be um uh, I've got the coolest issue. chart. Now, this, yeah, this I really paper, like this. Yeah, this is really so. good. This is published in Epidemiology, Patho- Pathology and Treatment of Diverticulitis, published in Gastroenterology. So like, this is a like, real cool paper. Mm. And it gives you the risk factors and, and like, and we'll just go to the drugs. Um, wrong page. Uh, it's it's just the the drugs gives you actual numbers. So so how yeah. bad is it really? Yeah, and how what you know how many times a week? Yeah, you know this. seems to increase your risk for taking these, these medications. Table. table one, this is it's a big paper that one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a massive it. paper, and, and and there's some other food stuff in here too. Mm. So it's quite interesting. Okay, so medication non aspirin NSAID. So this would be like Panadol. Yeah. Now, if you have it twice a week, you're increasing your odds of diverticulitis by. Seventy-two percent. Mm. Crazy. That's Panadol. Yeah. That's like every man and his dog takes Panadol. Oh, yeah. do, dogs or cats, it's toxic oh, Panadol. Don't, 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 don't give it to your dog. Um, aspirin um, gives it increase by by thirty-two percent. Mm. All NSAIDs together is sixty-two percent increase. Mm. Mm. Um, and corticosteroids. Oh, a lot, be... a lot of people on steroids, don't they? Yeah, there is quite a few. Two hundred and sixteen percent increase. Really, risk. gee, yeah. wow, that's huge, isn't it? I mean, um, and obviously these. This sorry, isn't any. Yeah, two hundred and seventy-four percent increase. That's even more so. This isn't everybody that takes those medications will end up with diverticulitis. But yeah. as as we said, if you have a propensity towards it, then yep. that then you then that's something that really um, can be a pretty strong driver. Yep, and uh, pain I've meds, seen it in clinic. Like, like opioids, you mentioned before being yep. bad. Yeah, two hundred and sixteen percent increased risk. Really? Wow. And what about vitamin D? Halves your risk. Yeah, I've got some good stats. Oh, I've got vitamin D coming up actually. Oh, have you? Shit, I gave it away. Gave it away, Steve. (laughs) But um, one one thing I found interesting was statin use was it it lead to an decrease uh, risk. Yeah, you said that. I thought found that interesting. I I think that's to do with um, suppressing the immune system and stops that that inflammation, which is very interesting. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so, sure. yeah, so that's really interesting with the medications. And look, how many people are on medications for different things? Oh, yeah. And how I have seen quite a lot of cases where people have pre existing issues, injuries, like things like that, yep. and chronic pain, and they need pain management. Yep. Um, and so then they've been had a lot of pain management over the years, a lot of um, medications, and ended up with diverticulitis. So amazing. Can, know, can I give you some, um, you know, you mentioned um, the, probably the worst thing. And you mentioned this before, and I'm going to give you hit you with some numbers. Okay. You may not know these numbers, but if your BMI is high, like body mass index mm-hmm. over 30, mm-hmm. you've got an increased risk of 440 percent. Wow! In some studies, Jeez, that's isn't awesome, that isn't remarkable? That's crazy. So yeah. if you want diverticulitis, get fat, and you get pretty much <laughs> diverticulitis. Yes. But there's there's more ways to increase it. If you're inactive. Mm. It increases it dramatically. Yeah. But if you're active, it cuts it by about a third. Yeah, you said running didn't you? Running, uh, intense exercise was the best thing they found. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? That's funny. Now, fibre, yep, it cuts it by almost half. Mm. But here's some running thing. What about eating nuts? Is that good or bad? 
Um, that's interesting. We haven't, you just skip them away. You had oh, sorry. Well, we'll get to that. We'll I'm sticking with the program, but that's yeah, okay. We'll no, but we, will, but we will go back and talk about diet yeah. because the nut seeds, popcorn type yeah. um, contentious <laughs> argument. Very contentious. Um, Leave so, it hanging. So other pr- issues that can drive it, um, obesity, as you said. Yep. So uh, huge, quite a p- significant risk factor. Um yeah, so uh, there's there's a study here, another study here. So um, women with a body mass index higher than 30 hmm. were twice as likely to um, end up with diverticulitis. Gee, women, yeah. And that's... complications of diverticulitis, sorry. So yeah. perforations, um, abscess, things like that. Um, and hip to weight ratio has been an in, shown to be an independent risk for complica- complications as well. Yeah, so, so women should have larger hips yeah. than men. Yeah. Um, and their ratio should be about 0.8. Yes. So the waist should be smaller waist than the hips. Smaller than the hips. Should be. It should be. Yeah. And if it isn't, it's a little bit problematic. Men yeah. should be about one to one because men are boring. We yeah. got no shape Those whatsoever. We're just straight, straight flat up, up and down. down. I, know. I don't know why you'd be interested in looking at men. There's, no There's curves nothing in there. to them. No curves. <laughs> nothing. Just a lot of hair. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on the man, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> um, and low vitamin D status, Steve. So this is the vitamin oh, D. Oh, D. Yeah. Um, so there's mechanisms linking vitamin D. Uh, uh, deficiencies to diverticular Ooh, disease in um, animal studies. Yeah. And supplementation has been shown to support gastrointestinal immunity. And we all know that vitamin D is involved in immune function. Yep. Um, so that's really important. And also barrier function as well. So gut barrier function, vitamin D is vitally important there as well. Ah, these two, yeah. So if you have low levels, that can be um, uh, that can be a, a factor in it as well. Um yeah, so research into other diseases associated with vitamin D deficiency and disordered collagen and elastin indicate that it has antifibrotic action. So vitamin D wow. can help to reduce thickening and scarring of tissue as well. Amazing. So, yeah, so that's um, that's another reason to make sure your vitamin D levels are good. Um, and when we say good, we like to see them. Our doctors, uh, anything over 50 and you're mm. adequate. And you are adequate over 50, but you don't want to be adequate. You want to be optimal. Yeah. So optimum will be around 100. Yeah. And it should, the, the range they doctors give you is 50 to 150. Yeah. So you want to be over 100. Over 100. And if you, you know, you, ha- you have immune issues, you might even say up to 120. Yeah. 100, you know, sort of around Mine's there. 153. So. I just don't know how I remember that, but that oh, was my wow. last test. Yeah. That's oh, right. Well, there you go. So, hmm. yeah. so yeah. So we're going to make I'm sure. Brown as a berry. Look at me. You are very brown. That's true. I go outside out to do intense exercise. You do. You're always swimming, running, something yeah. or other. But that's. You, you can combine them both. You can get vitamin D and do intense yeah. exercise at the same time. You can, yeah. You know, get that for the treatment. But, but I mean, you know, just think about that mm. for a sec. It's no brainer, isn't it? It is a no brainer. Great yeah. for your heart, reduce cancer risk, all that. All those good things. 